Hello everyone, let's discuss multivariate linear regression which is the second machine learning algorithm which we are going to discuss. So in multivariate linear regression there will be multiple features of the input and in univariate we discussed like we had only single feature. So here in input variable x we have multiple features. For example uh, for house price prediction uh, there is feature like uh, number of uh, bedrooms, house sizes, how far the house is from city and features like that. So multiple features will be involved in this case. So here if we have x1, x2 and up to xn. So these are the features and for all the features we have this training examples, right? This way I'm writing this is the first training example and uh, for the first training example we have all the features x1 x2 up to xn right and similarly for the second training example we have and all the way up to for the mth training example so i am considering considering m training examples and n features now we can write this in matrix form like this x matrix will be this way x1 x2 up to xn for the first training example and for the second training example similarly x1 x2 xn this is for the second training example and all the way up to for the mth training example, this is x1, x2, xm and I am putting m in the bracket to indicate that this is indicating the, the training sample and subscript 1, 2, 3 for the features. So this way we can define our input matrix that is also known as design matrix and all through the machine learning we will use the same notation and convention so for the sake of uniformity so this we have x we have and so if we take any vertical cross section we will get which training example is this including all the features this is the first training example this is the second training example likewise so I am writing this way this is your x1 first training example this includes our first training example including all the features x2 as uh, this way and so on we have x mth training example so this indicates this line indicates that we, uh, this is the symbol x1 x2 xn right this line indicates so this is the design matrix we have now what we want our objective is to define a linear function of this right like this way z is equal to for any ith training example we can say z i is equal to w1 x1 since n number of features are there so we'll have n variables w1 w2 these are the weights w2 x2 plus say wn xn so these are the weights which are the coefficient of x1 x2 and xn and plus the bias term so all in all we have n plus 1 variables w1 w2 wn to b and also b so since it is for the ith training sample we can write like that for the ith training sample and also we can write this in terms of the matrix multiplication how we can write so if we define a vector w1 w2 w n this is a row vector of the weights this times the column and for the ith we have this ith column that is x1 x2 xn for the ith one so and this plus b so this is these two equations are equivalent this is in matrix form matrix multiplication and by the way, I'm defining this as our weight vector, W vector. So we have W vector 
times this is nothing but the ith training sample that is x i plus b is z i so this is in matrix form this is the vector times vector plus bias okay now what we are gonna do is to write z as a complete vector so how we can do that we can write like z if we define a new vector z vector as z vector as z1 z2 up to zm using this equation it means z1 stands for w x1 plus b so we can say this is nothing but w x1 plus b this is the first element z1 similarly w x2 plus b plugging these values from this equation and all the way up to w x m plus b we have this is a z vector and now observe this carefully now we can write in another matrix form which is nothing but w x1 w x2 w x m as the addition of two vectors plus i'm defining another vector of dimension one times m and all the values of this vector will be b only so addition of these two vectors will be this one only now let's see what is this one this vector is again the matrix multiplication of like this we have the weight vector w1 w2 up to wn times times what is x1 x1 is this one which is nothing but this thing only so basically this is x1 x2 x x uh, m so uh, this thing can be split can be broken down into this way like w1 w2 wn times the x vector because when you multiply with this row vector with this uh, with this x matrix then we have w1 x1 which is w1 x1 is this w2 x2 which is this likewise so this is nothing but our design matrix x only right so we say this is our design matrix x and by the way if you don't understand how to multiply these two matrices one row vector with the matrix then do comment below so this is a row vector w times x plus what is this one this is i'm defining a new bias vector as b vector okay so this quantity is written like this and this is by the way w1 w2 wn is a uh, w vector so w vector times x plus this is the bias term b vector we have finally z vector so basically our g vector which is z1 z2 zm can be written as the matrix multiplication of the row vector of w and x matrix this design matrix wx plus the bias vector b vector so this is how we can write our linear function it's very important and uh, uh, this way we have vectorized our equation otherwise we will have to write this 
uh, w1 x1 w2 x2 so we'll have to use two for loops one for summing up and another for writing z1 z2 z m so it will be less efficient right so this is really an efficient way to write this equation because it uses parallel computation which i have already described uh, uh, describe the benefit of the vectorization okay that's it in the next video we are going to write down the cost function and uh, also uh, partial derivatives del z over del w1 del z over del w2 likewise using back propagation fine i hope you understand it thank you